The roads to the Isles have always had a certain romance about them, and none more so than the route to Mallee, whose remoteness and beauty are linked with a historic past. For these were the shores where Bonnie Prince Charlie landed in 1745 in his ill-fated bid to claim the English throne. The monument at Glenfinnan stands at the spot where the Stuart standard was first raised by the rebel Highland clans, whose hopes for a Jacobite victory were finally dashed at Culloden in the following year. Against this steering background, the traveller of today can journey the 42 miles from Fort William to Malig by train and enjoy a grandstand view of the finest scenery that any railway in Britain has to offer. What's more, the trip can be made behind a steam locomotive, not just for the occasional special, but to a regular public timetable throughout the summer. Our locomotive is another XLMS Black 5 dating from 1937, and loaned by Paddy Smith, who normally keeps it at Carnford. Soon after leaving Fort William, the scene is dominated by mighty Ben Nevis as the train skirts round the shores of Loch Eel. Of structure on the line, the great 21 arch viaduct at Glenfinnan, <laughs> sweeping across the glen in a graceful curve at a height of 100 feet. <laughs> Dating from the 1890s, it's one of the earliest concrete structures of its size in the world. Passengers on the inaugural steam run were allowed to get out and watch from the hillside as the train crossed the viaduct again. A rare treat indeed, for this splendid scene is otherwise only accessible to the most determined hiker. The Black Five sets off again and shows off one of its lesser known tricks, gently blowing smoke rings down the glen. Beyond Glenfinnan, 
another glimpse of the great Ben Nevis, by now nearly 20 miles away. never far from water, salt or fresh. The train now runs for three miles alongside the freshwater Loch Out, whose shores rank among the major scenic attractions of the line. photographers in hot pursuit. After leaving Loch Islet, the train climbs past the little kirk at Paul Niche on its way to Arisay. station, villagers crowd in to see the first steam train for 21 years on the line to Malik, while a modern diesel waits for the single line section to clear. For the locomotive crew, Colin Ross and Alec Howie, the comfort of a diesel cab is exchanged for a noisy, swaying footplate, swirling in coal dust, rattling continuously to the thump of the pistons. Afterwards, they said they loved every minute of it. Next, a view of the famous white sands of Mora, gently warmed all year round by the waters of the Gulf Stream. Before our road crossing, just three miles short of Mallee, a stop has to be made as the station is now an unstaffed port and there's nobody to open the gates except the train crew. A good chance too to give the locomotive a better grip by laying sand on the rail for by now the sandboxes are empty after the constant gradients on the journey. final stretch of the line towards Malik, 
the locals turn out to see the steam train with scant regard for their own safety. The train finally reaches Mallee, directly opposite South Sky. The prime reason for building a railway to this remote spot was the fish. It's hard to imagine now that Malik, in its heyday, was the biggest herring port in all of Europe, with catches of many hundreds of tons landed daily, and all of it transported by rail. The landings now go by road, and it's many years since the sound of a locomotive last echoed across the quay. For the return trip to Fort William, the engine has to run backwards, as there's no longer a turntable at Mallee. Another historic site on the line is Loch Nan Nua, where ships of the French fleet brought Bonnie Prince Charlie for his triumphant landing in the 45, and a year later secretly sailed away with the defeated young pretender on the ebbing tide of the Stuart fortunes. For students of